Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Planescape Torment with me, Bring It Dawn. Uh, just so everybody knows, I've been sneezing up a storm today, and if that uh, comes across in the video, I apologize. But allergies decided to smack me in the face when I woke up today. And so here we are. I'm gone. Hate this springtime. Wish it was winter all the time. Everything would be dead, nothing could hurt me. Anyway, uh, let's talk to the advocate. Uh, this is a beautiful silver mirror. Take your word for it. It looks... Okay. Alright. Uh, this man is dressed in soft blue robes covered with intricate designs. Despite their opulence, however, the robes look wrinkled and worn. You place the man's age somewhere between middle age and early 60s. The worry lines make an exact determination difficult. As you enter, the man turns slowly towards you. As he does, you are suddenly struck with the terrible sense that you know this man, or did at one time. Greetings. The man squints as if trying to place you. Yes? Is there something that I can help you with? Uh, who are you? Updated my journal. I am Ianus. He studies you and frowns. Were you looking for me? I don't know. What is this place? I'm an advocate. These are my offices. Ianus's voice takes on an irritated edge. You seek counsel? If not, perhaps you'd best test your curiosity elsewhere. An advocate? What's that? Updated my journal. Mort breaks into a whisper. He's saying he's a lawyer, a counselor, one of those Burks who rattle their bone boxes at the courts. Ianus's frown deepens. An advocate provides counsel, helps others navigate the labyrinths of Sigil's legal system, arranges legacies for citizens to ensure that their property is divided as they choose upon death, defends those in Sigil's courts who have been wrongly accused. He pauses. Did you need help in any of these areas? Yeah, legacies. Uh, they are contracts that are deliverable at the death of the client. They provide specifics on how a person's possessions are to be divided upon the event of their demise. I have also heard them called wills. I see. Perhaps there is something you can help me with. Very well. What is it? What is it I can help you with? Uh, excuse me for asking, but are you alright? You must excuse me. As of late, I have been beset by troubles. I'm afraid it has been a rather trying time these past few years. Anything I could help with? No, no. There's little that can be done. He nods at you. Nevertheless, I appreciate your offer. Thank you. Perhaps talking about your troubles will help ease your mind. I sighs. I do not wish to burden you. I lost my daughter not long ago. There's also the fire, but that is another matter. Well, tell me about your daughter. Instantly, Ionis seems to collapse into himself. Yes, his business-like uh, facade drains from his face, to be replaced with cold despair. My daughter, Dianara, passed away some time ago. Oh, snap. Okay. Um. Uh, tell me about her. What was she like? Dianara? She was young. She had recently joined the Society of Sensation, the Sensates. Not an unpleasant faction, but she had also met someone there. She followed him on a journey, and there she died. Her bod, he looks pained. I was not even able to recover her body. Uh, I saw a woman by that name interred in the mortuary memorial hall. She had become a ghost and claimed she knew me. Updated my journal. Well, what? <laughs> Ines looks flustered. What did you just say? Her spirit now resides in the memorial hall. I spoke with her for a time, and she seems to be in distress. I'll just say her spirit now resides in the memorial hall. You had best not be speaking figuratively. Ionis looks furious. If so, then I have no time for your wordplay. Uh, no, my words are literal. Her spirit resides in the, in the memorial hall. She has become a spirit? Yes. I, I will have to seek her out. See if I can communicate with her. See what has kept her here. Her state. How do you know she has become a spirit? Uh, I spoke with her for a time, and she seems to be in distress. You spoke to her? Ina seems to become more confused by the moment. What distresses her? Well, me, apparently. <laughs> she said that she loved me, and that I had loved her, and that I had forsaken her. I see. Perhaps. Ina frowns and studies you. His face has become like stone. Are you the one she left sigil with? The one who led her on the journey that killed her? I'm not certain. I think I may be that man, but I have forgotten much. You? 
Anas looks you up and down. You were the one, and you say you have forgotten? Anas draws himself up. It looks like he's squaring himself for a battle. You have forgotten, but the incident was not so long ago. How can this be? I have a strange condition. I lose myself, for a time. Anything you can tell me about myself or your daughter would be invaluable. Countless liars have I known in my tenure, tenure in the city. Anna studies you intently. You do not strike me as one of them, at least on this matter. He sighs. If you truly do not remember, then whatever befell you and my daughter on your journey must have left deep scars. I am inclined to agree. Then I ask you a word on this. If your memory returns, and you discover what has happened to my daughter, return to me so that my mind may be at, may at last be at rest on this matter. I will do that. Very well then. Now leave. I wish to be alone with my thoughts. One moment. You see Ionis. He turns as you enter and affixes you with a tired gaze. There are dark sacks beneath his eyes, and he looks as if he has not been sleeping. Uh, greetings, Ionis. You again. Ionis frowns slightly as he stares at you. What is it you want this time? I had some questions for you. Very well. What is it I can help you with? Can you tell me about the fire? There's nothing much to say about the matter. It was a strange localized fire. I cannot imagine what would have been precious in the documents that were burned, but someone must have wanted them destroyed. Uh, any luck in locating the person responsible? No, neither the Harmonium nor the Mercy Killers have had any fortune in locating the person responsible. Can you tell me what was burned? A number of old legacies were burned, and some mementos and other keepsakes of value only to me. Legacies. Okay, we already talked about legacies. Okay, um... You say she was a... Okay, um, let's start with... Yeah, you say she was a sensate? Yes, I mean, I'm slightly more animated, as if warming himself on a precious memory. She had joined them because of her gift, and the fact there was so much about the multiverse that she wanted to experience. The sensates lend themselves readily to the sharing of experience and sensation. Gift. Updated my journal. Oh yes, Ianis nods. My daughter had the blood of an oracle running in her veins. Uh, but it was an unreliable talent. At times, she could predict events even before they took place. She had sight. She could see through time itself, sift through the threads of fate. Do you know where she went on this journey? She never said. I'm not certain she was capable of saying where they had gone. It must have been a terrible place. And how did she die? I do not know. Her body was never recovered. Anis's face turns blood red, and his hands clench into fists. That's perhaps the most maddening part of this misery. I will never know what possessed her to run off like that. What happened to her? Know where her body lies now. Forgive me for asking, but how do you know she's dead if you never saw her, saw the body? I mean, mostly because I told her, told him that I saw her spirit. It is most curious. I went to the dustman to see if they had found her body, and they directed me to one of the faction, to one of their faction outside the dustman monument. A dustman named Death of Names, I believe. He's said to be an oracle of sorts, concerning those who have died. He told me my daughter has died. Okay, well, then that's all we can talk about. I'm gone. Them. It's going in circles now. Done. Alright, who's up next? Uh, Finam, the linguist's home. Or is it house? Home. Done. Hi. Like a shadow, I am. Play for shadows. Why not? not? I'm gone. 
Allow me to activate this. Done. I'm gone. Come on. There we go. Linguist's, a Linguist's ashes. There's an urn atop this small cabinet full of ashes and charred bits of bone. Etched into the base of the urn are the words Finn Andley, beloved husband, father, and scholar of 100 languages. Use stories bones tell on the remains. The ashes seem to stir faintly as if moved by your breath. A faraway voice whispers up from within the urn. Why? Why have I been summoned to these ashes, cold and gray as the heart of a hag? To answer some questions, spirit. Ask then, so that I might return to my most quiet thoughts. Who were you? I was Finn, a linguist and scholar. I was murdered, murdered, by a student of mine. Murdered so that I could not teach another the languages that I taught him. The tongue of Uyo, it was, one of the rarest in the multiverse. I knew of none who spoke it, save myself and that one darnable, murderous student. That's all I wish to know. Farewell. Well, I guess we already know this guy isn't, uh, who he says he is. Finan the Linguist. This short, scholarly man, a tight, nervous frown on his face, looks you up and down. Greetings. I am Finan. Uh, I must beg your pardon, sir, but I care little for guests, invited or otherwise. So unless you have business with me, I would ask you to leave. I did have some questions. But have you know that I am a scholar and a linguist, sir? While I shall happily entertain any questions regarding my field of study, language, and the like, I can be of no help to you in other matters. Okay, well. Thanks for wasting my time. The Curiosity right. Shop. What do we got? A set of unusual forge tools, though their handles look to be made of carved bone, they are heavier than iron. Shelves full of mugs, plates, books, decanters, candle holders, and other bric-a-brac. <laughs> I, lo I love the term bric-a-brac. Uh, most are of strange metals or minerals, and many of the books appear to be bound in flesh. Done. A massive battle standard, it looks to be made out of some scaled creature's hide. Uh, it sight stirs up faint memories. You may not have seen this particular one before, but others like it perhaps. Nice, so Standish and Vrishka. Start with Standish. This downtrodden little man scurries about the curiosity shop, dusting, cataloging, and moving things about for the place's uh, proprietress. I've never seen that word used before, proprietress. I uh, notice he smells faintly of onions. He glances up at you nervously as you approach him. Please, sir, I can't speak with you. I have work to do, and my mistress simply won't allow it. I just had a few questions. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't. Please leave me be before my mistress notices you're talking. Notices me talking to you. Your mistress. Little man nods. Yes, Mistress Varishka. I am Standish, her servant, her slave. I committed a crime that and was sentenced to slavery, then purchased in a low reward like many of her slaves, most of whom she keeps at her manor. Now please, I beg of you, leave me be, or she'll become angered and beat me unmercifully. All right, farewell, Standish. The sharp featured woman's appearance is attractive, though somewhat disturbing, with her blue-black skin and bright yellow eyes. So she's Nightcrawler, alright. As she examines you, a small pair of bat-like wings unfold from her back, then seem to settle back into her skin. Well, well, a floating, disembodied, prever prevericating skull? She narrows her eyes. You, you're the scarred man who's been going around asking all the questions. She looks you up and down. You sure look lost. Did you want to come in, really? Or are you just casting the place because you have nothing better to do? Because Vrishka, she indicates herself, can help you. How can you help me? I travel and trade extensively. I hear a great deal, I purchase a great deal, and I own a great deal. Perhaps I can make, a, make you a great deal. <laughs> Is there anything that you desire? Perhaps, what are you selling? Would you care to examine the weapons and charms, or some of my more exotic acquisitions? Let's look at the exotic items. Vrishka smiles at, as you look at the various shelves in the middle of the shop. If you see nothing that you like here, there are more items towards the front and back of the store as well. The Fiend's Tongue. You examine what appears to be a tongue floating in a jar of brine. Vrishka frowns at it. This is a Fiend's Tongue, a Cornigan's, I think, but who really knows? It said that placed into the mouth of any living thing, it would give the ability of speech, even if there was none before. I'm selling this oddity for only 66 coppers. 
Should you want it? Well, let me look at the other things first. Uh, examine the Gorgon Salve. You examine a bottle labeled as Gorgon Salve. Rishka holds it up for you. I traded for this with some uh, sword slinging prime worlder. Uh, Perseus, I think, was his name. Of course. <laughs> uh, in case you don't aren't familiar with uh, Perseus, Perseus is the one who fought Medusa in uh, Greek mythology. And he was the one that used the shield to have her look at her own reflection. No. I'm sorry. She didn't look at her own reflection. He uh, used the shield so that he could fight her without having to look directly into her eyes. Anyway, um, yeah, smear it to the surface of any being turned to stone, it will revert them to flesh. Only 100 copper commons, a bargain considering how handy it might come in if you ever find a friend of yours transmuted to rock. Examine the metallic cube figurine. Examine a small metal replica of a cube-like creature with huge eyes on it on one of its faces. The toy has two legs, two arms, two folding wings, and at least 18 points of articulation. Freshka smiles as you pick it up. A collector's item, perhaps, or a piece of artwork. Who knows? But I like it. If you do buy it, ask around. Someone might know more about it than I. You can have it for only 1,500 copper coins. And that's a pretty important item. We'll probably come back for it later. I might pick it up now. We'll see. Examine the monster jug. Examine a plain-looking jug. Despite its common appearance, you feel reluctant to touch the thing, as if it might bite you. Rishka watches you, chuckling, then shrugs. It's a jug. It's got some sort of monster trapped in it. That's why your hair is prickling up like that. If you'd like it, it's only 123 copper. Okay. Actually, let's go ahead and buy the, this. I'll take it. Yes, Rishka purrs. A wise choice. The copper you pour into her hand seems to disappear the moment it touches her palm. She hands you the item. Please, enjoy your newest acquisition. All right, let's go to the front of the store. You look at the various shelves towards the front of Rishka's shop. Examine the baby oil. You examine a number of small bottles, each labeled as baby oil. Rishka picks up one and presents it to you. Interested? It's the real thing, of course. Thousands of mewling mortal babies went into the making of this stuff. <laughs> oh, no thanks. Let me see the other stuff. Examine the chocolate closet. You examine a twisted little imp-like creature sculpted out of pure milk chocolate. Looks delicious, does it not? Imported from the lower plains. These are rare, you know, and quite prized by lovers of chocolate and confections. It's a real quasit, a fiendish familiar polymorphed into chocolate by powerful sorcery. It's only 199 coppers. Examine the Codex of the Inconceivable. Examine a rather unassuming book held closed by a tiny brass lock. That, Kuzvarishka, is the Codex of the Inconceivable. I only say that it's just... just... well, I cannot explain it. Mere words simply won't suffice. You can own it yourself for a mere 1,000 copper commons, and believe me, it is well worth it. <laughs> okay. Examine the Diva's Tear, or Deva's Tear. Tears. I uh, examine a small glass vial labeled as Deva's Tears. These were collected from a Deva who was captured during a blood war skirmish. The fiends tormented the imprisoned angel for eons before he at last escaped. This small bottle holds the 12 tears he shed in that time. Their price is but 100 copper commons. And what would you use Deva's Tears for? Hmm. Now examine the Elixir of Horrific Separation. You examine a bottle labeled as the Elixir of Horrific Separation. Rishka presents it to you. Uh, this stuff was compounded by a scholar who'd found he she possessed a darker half, uh, a side of her which took control at times and bade her do awful things. Uh, this potion was to have split the darker half away from her, creating two separate beings. Mercy killers, however, found and executed her for a string of depraved murders before she could use it. I charge you only 200 copper commons for the elixir. Hmm. Alright, to the back of the store. Examine the stained lens. Uh, examine a stained ground glass lens and the width, the width of your hand held in brushed steel ring. Should be an A brushed steel ring. A small geared protrusion coming off the ring makes it look as if the lens should attach to some sort of clockwork machine, and it smells faintly of horrible perfume. Rishka holds it up for you. I have no idea what this really is, but it radi radiates r fairly powerful magic. An old soldier named Gissus bought, brought it up to me from a lower plane battlefield. 
He murdered his own men in order to escape his tour of duty there. It brought me a number of interesting items he'd collected over the course of, of the campaign. I kept it mostly as a conversation piece, though you may have it for 149 copper coins, if you'd like. Uh, examine Yevra's ring. You examine a, a ring. You examine a ring in a small padded case. Vreska holds it up so you, that you can see it more closely. This is Yevra's ring of almost invisibility. It makes its wearer invisible. Well, almost. Uh, I'll part with it for the meager sum of 349 copper coins. Examine the rune-covered Aelstein. You examine a large pewter Aelstein covered in strange runes. Prisco holds it up for you to see more closely. An ale mug of most unusual manufacture, which keeps its contents, usually beer of course, icy cold, whatever the surrounding temperature. 299 copper commons, and you'll enjoy the frostiest ale you've ever had outside the paraplane of ice. Uh, examine the tattered ragdoll. The ears have not been kind to this tiny ragdoll. It is coming apart at the seams, and it looks like its threads are unraveling. It is obviously intended to be a replica of the Lady of Pain, but the button eyes and its plush softness don't strike much fear into your heart. Vrishka holds it up for you. This was found in a well-trapped strongbox sunk deep beneath the surface of Sigil. It was part of a small hoard of treasure and forbidden magical texts. But I don't know what it's for. If you like it, it's only 99 copper coins. Alright, let's look at her weapons and charms. And let's sell some stuff. So we got the Mordron cube. Or Modron cube. I don't know what the rest of the items in his shop are, but I know what this is because I've read about... I'm not going to spoil anything, but I know what this is used for. It's actually used for two things. Uh, the small metal toy is a replica of a cube-like mechanical creature with huge eyes on one of its faces. The toy... Alright, we've already read that part. Uh, the intricacy of this toy is incredible. Its joints are composed of tiny gears, cogs, pulleys, and swivel joints, and there are even tiny springs on the legs that help support the feet. There's a little switch on the back that moves the eyes back and forth, and the wings are made of some tissue-like metal that folds up neatly when the wings are flush when the wings are flush with the body. Despite the toy's awkward shape, it rests easily on any surface, no matter how uneven. Um, I might just sell the blood fly charms. I'll probably never use those. I can buy more of these if I need to from the uh Why is no one wearing the Magus Guard? Or maybe he can't wear it. Uh, yeah, I probably won't be using that anyway. She probably just needs to get rid of all those keys. I doubt they're going to be useful. Um, I still have the Magus Guard. If he can't wear it... He has the Omega Shield. Oh, he can. It doesn't change anything. Also, doesn't seem to change anything for him. Alright, so I'll just sell it to her. What I'm probably going to do is go through and actually try and sell most of the. Uh... Oops, whoa, no, don't do that. There we go. Um, buy most of her items. Uh, exotic items. Let's, uh... Let's... I'm interested in the Fiend's Tongue, because if I come across anybody who can't talk, I could use it. Have I run across anybody who can't talk yet? It's only 66 coppers, so yeah. I mean, I think that's a deal. The Gorgon Salve, I'm not worried about. So all it, all it does is turn someone back from stone. The monster jug, I'm sure I can just use it to summon a monster. The baby oils, I can't even buy it, can I? Yeah. Codex of the Inconceivable I'm interested in, so let's pick that up. I mean, it's a thousand copper. Oh yeah, Yevra's ring. I'll take. I'm 
interested in what the stained lens is for. This was pretty cheap, wasn't it? Yeah, 99 copper coins. I'll take that. Nope, not what I meant to do. Well, let's look at what we got. I can use it now. We couldn't use it earlier. Connects to the inconceivable. And let's just move all this stuff over here. We have almost invisibility. Just plus one to armor class. Oh, that's right, because this is... There we go, sure. I don't know how he wears rings. I feel like they would just melt off of his body. Considering he's just a conduit for, uh... I can use this now. Can I not use this before? Oh no, never mind, I did that before. Oh no. You know what, Anna, you can carry Farad's crutch. I can't use this yet. Uh, let's see. What you first taken to be a rather unassuming book held closely by tiny brass lock is, in actuality, bound in strange leathers and enchanted bronze. It is labeled simply the Codex of the Inconceivable. Alright. Open it and read. You unlock the book's bindings and open it. As you glance over the tome's contents, your jaw drops. You stand, spellbound, flipping through the, its pages. Its contents are simply too much to be described. Mere words seem powerless to explain the wonders it beholds, or the wonders it holds. That was... that... I... What? What? What is in it, Chief? Uh, I don't know what to say, Mort. What? You've got to be kidding me, right? Come on, let me see it. Show him the codex. Mort floats over your shoulder to examine the codex's contents. His eyes nearly pop from their sockets as they scan the pages. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. I... but... wow. You stand, you stand thoughtfully for a moment, looking down at the codex, before closing it and reverently putting the tome away. Okay. Alright, can I... I don't think I can use this yet, right? Because again, I know what it's used for. Alright, move the arms and make a sword fighting... <laughs> move the arms and make sword fighting noises. Alright. The toy clicks and whirs as you move its clockwork joints. Within moments, the tiny cube has van vanquished every imaginary opponent you have sent, sent against it, and settled back to its normal position. Wave its arms and make cheering noises. Hordes of imaginary creatures cheer the cube's victory. You can almost see a tiny tear brimming in one of its eyes. It is a hero, the greatest cube ever to roam the plains, and everyone loves it. Put the cube away for future battles against the multiverse. Mort stares at you and shakes his head. What's that, cube hero? Mort's a stupid skull? Why, yes he is, isn't he, cube hero? Hey, it didn't say that. Yes, it did. It just said it... It said it just now. <laughs> what? Give me that thing. No, it's mine. He wants to hang out with me anyway. Don't you, cube hero? Yes, you do. I just want to hold it for a second. But you don't have any hands. I hold it in my teeth. No, I think I'll just put it away for now. I'm gonna smash that Modron cube to bits. <laughs> Did you hear anything, cube hero? Neither did I. <laughs> oh, that's cute. All right. Uh, the years haven't been tied. All right. It's a quick save before I activate anything silly. All right. Talk to the item. The years have been kind to this tiny rag doll. It is coming apart at the seams, and it looks like its threads are unraveling. It is obviously intended to be a replica of the Lady of Pain, but the button eyes and its plush softness don't strike much fear into your heart. Should I be cute to it? Oh, you're just a cute little lady with pain, aren't you? Aren't you? Yes, you are. The doll's not respond to your coaxing. Uh, merely stares at you with its button eyes. Um, yeah. Oh, great lady of pain, goddess of sigil, hear my plea for aid and help me in my hour of need. 
As you're about to say the words, you suddenly feel a strange crawling sensation in the back of your skull. With it comes a premonition that sta saying these words will place you in terrible danger. Even feeling as you do could prove dangerous. All right, let's let's buy the rest of the items here. Um, let's grab the monster jug for 123 copper. Exotic items, front of the store. Let's get the Davis tears. And Elixir of Horrific Separation. I want to know who I can use that on, or if I can at all. 200. Oh, we still got plenty of money. I don't know if any of these are going to be used at all. It's a heavy, plain looking metallic. Yeah, let's use the uh, monster jug. Oh, up in the jug, see if anything comes out. At first, there is nothing, but then a black, viscous liquid begins to bubble out from from the jug's mouth, forming a slimy pool of steaming, tarry filth on the ground. As the jug begins to dissolve in your hands, the pool begins to writhe, throb, and rise to form a tall, hideous creature. What the? What's up? Alright, let's use a uh, skull mob. We haven't seen what it can do yet. Ignis hears you. Yes, my master. Oh, look at that! Here come the skulls! <laughs> Scroll of friends. Alright, he already knows friends. Um, here. It's funny that now he knows the spell friends. Alright. So I don't know if you can actually use all these for anything, but I'd rather have them for potential uh, dialogue options later on than not have them. I'm interested in the rune covered Ailed Stein, because the guy outside had one as well, right? Yeah, I'll take the stained lens. I mean, if I can just afford everything, why not? I like curiosities. Now, I almost have everything, right? Screw it, I'll take it. I think I've almost bought everything, right? Yeah, I did. Awesome. All right, let's go through more curiosities. I can't even do anything with this. Okay. Stained lens. The scope looks like someone spilled beer on it, and it smells faintly of some horrible perfume. Would you like to identify this item? I don't have a... That's weird. I'm used to just being able to, um... Well, screw it. I'll memorize the spell. Later. Alright, let's talk to her. I haven't actually spoken to her yet. And not just now, I had some questions. I'll entertain any questions about the merchandise, but I'm not going to be drawn into one of your famous 20 questions about anything around the spire. Understood? Uh, what are you, Vrishka? Or Vr Vrishika? Uh, Vrishka's... Vrishika sighs loudly. An alu fiend, a half demon. My mother was Tanari, a fiend, and my father a great king of mortals. Such a rude question, but then you're rather rude looking yourself, aren't you? <laughs> Alright. Uh, what do you mean by calling Mort prevaricating? There we go. Uh, prevaricating, misrepresenting, perjuring, dismul dismulating, lying. Oh, did I say that? I meant a floating disembodied pontificating school, as in dogmatic, always stating an opinion in a self-important manner. Vrishika smiles innocently. Okay, another question. What do you mean by calling... Oh, never mind. Uh, tell me about this place, at least. Uh, what you see within this shop is the result of much trading and traveling across the plains. 
She makes a sweeping gesture of the shop. Weapons, charms, and other specialty items are for sale here. As well. Or as well. Everything that is rare and oh so exquisite fills this emporium. Your needs. I sate them. Okay, well, that wasn't very exciting. But I got everything that she had. Done. Except for the baby oil. So my collection will never be complete. I'll never own myself some baby oil. So be it. All right. Lazy scribe. Can I talk to him? The bank has a sheepish smile and a half bow at your approach. For a moment, I thought you were one of my employer's men when you walked in. Was I ever relieved to see that you were not? Why? Why are you here? I cannot stand my work at the record subhall 7 for another moment, so I darted off. Had I simply gone home, my employer would have sent a messenger. That... that tyrant? That is why I'm hiding here, of course. I intend to lounge about for a bit longer before returning to my cramped little desk. Alright, farewell then. Alright. Oh yeah, let's go... See, the episode's been a little long. Let's go talk to the guy with the uh, Stein, because I now have one as well. And then we'll call it an episode. Now that I own every curiosity from the, uh, from the curiosity shop. Oh, wrong thing. Oh, the drunken mage. Okay, I can't talk to him about it. That's lame. I'm gone. All right, next episode, we'll go to the art in Curio Galleria. Galleria? I keep wanting to say Galleria, but it's Galleria. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and hope to see y'all in the next episode.